Hello everyone! Today I am going to talk to you about an older character from an older RP that I haven't talked about since Inktober. So this is Tang. He is from the Save Your Dad from Fairies roleplay, which is an older roleplay because Bones and I have been very busy between our roommate moving out and work and life stuff. We just haven't had time to RP, which is usually something we do as like a pastime just for fun like communal storytelling type of things. Um, but we haven't worked on any new RPs recently and we haven't continued any of our um, more current RPs. So since I don't have any new material to talk about, I'm going to talk about an old character who we we talked a little bit about in the previous videos where we talked about the Save Your Dad from Fairies RP, uh, but we never actually talked about Tang here. Um, in detail, or told his story. So, here we are. So if you have not watched the previous videos about this RP, to lay the groundwork for this world, there are two worlds, the human world and the fairy world. Um, the fairy world is aware of the human world, but the human world is not aware of the fairy world, uh, and they are connected through various portals. So it's very easy for, like, fairies to go through because they know where all the portals are, but humans don't, generally. Uh, humans also don't have magic, so it might be hard to travel between worlds. The other thing you need to know about the fairy world is that it is broken up into four courts. Um, there is the fauna court, the flora court, the fungi court, and the pestilence court. Um, and they each have, a, I guess, a theme to them, uh, which is kind of signified in their names. Um, so fairies that hail from the flora court are kind of mixed with trees and plants. For example, you could be an elf who is also an apple tree, um, or a mermaid who is also like a, like a pond flower of some sort. If you're from the fauna court, you might be like a deer anthro person or a fox anthro person, um, and it, it goes on. Meanwhile, the human world, uh, I should say, is like our world, it's modern times. So I guess to talk about Tang's story, I will talk about the other goings-on that kind of lead to him being introduced to the plot. So, the reason it is called the Savior Dad from Fairies RP is because a human named Russell gets kidnapped by a very important fairy lady named Lady Summer um, because she wants a human to come and take care of her children and marry her. You can watch our video about Lady Summer. Um, I'm sure there'll be a card here somewhere that you can click to go watch it. Um, but basically, she kidnaps this human. Uh, eventually, he realizes what's been going on because she enchants him for a little bit. He breaks out of it uh, and he wants to go home um, because he has ch human children that um, got left behind in the human world. Um, and he has a human wife who he wants to go back to. He doesn't want to marry some fairy lady who has kidnapped him. And so he, he leaves Lady Summer. He's going to go home. Uh, to get back to his family. Another thing about the fairy world and the human world is that time works very differently in them. Uh, in the fairy world, time moves um, very slow compared to the human world. So, for example, a few days in the fairy world might be several months in the human world. So, Russell, who is gone for, like, maybe, like, a season or half a season, I can't remember, in the fairy world, he is gone for, like, months and months and months in the human world. So, Meanwhile, in the human world, while Russell is dealing with all of this, his wife Jane is at home, and one day she comes home, and, and Russell's there, but he's acting weird. And she's like, what's going on? He He's, like, really extra affectionate with her, despite the fact that they've been having problems, um, where they haven't been, like, super affectionate to each other, because she's been, like, kind of a workaholic, and he's been stuck at home uh, taking care of the kids, um, when he kind of wanted to go back to work, but he's the, he's like the house dad, the house husband. She comes home, he's super affectionate, he's acting really weird, he wants to eat all the cat food, and she's like, what is going on? She then finds out that Lady Summer, who kidnapped her actual husband, Russell, took their cat, I think his name's Fred, took their cat Fred and glamoured him to look like Russell. Um, so very quickly Jane finds out that her husband has been kidnapped by fairies and there is a fairy world apparently and she has to go save him. So she is like, 
I have to go save my husband. And of course, she has no idea about any of this fairy stuff. She doesn't know how it works. Um, she doesn't know about the time difference between the two worlds. She's just like, my husband's been gone for like a day. I gotta go in and get him. So she goes through the portal, which I think is in like their fridge or their cupboard. <laughs> that's like still open. She goes through to go save her hubby. Uh, and I think she leaves... She leaves the children in care of, like, her mother or something. I can't remember. But she she doesn't leave just the cat to take care of the children. Um, so she... And I think he also gets turned into a cat. He doesn't stay as Russell. So Jane goes on her adventure to get her husband back. Um, and immediately upon entering uh, the fairy world, she appears in the fauna court, I believe, um, where she... She quickly runs into the, um, the king of the fauna court. He really wants to murder his son, who happens to also be the son of Lady Summer, uh, her teenage son. And, uh, so this king, the only person who can kill the king is his son, um, and the only person that can kill the, the king's son is, uh, is the, the mother of the son. So... The king is like, please go convince my wife to murder our son um, so that I, I won't be killed and I can continue my immortal reign. So Jane, having no idea about any of this, she just wants to find Russell. She's like, sure, whatever, as long as you don't throw me in the dungeon or kill me, I'll go find your son or whatever. So she goes off. I think she is almost eaten by some fairies or almost turned into a fish. I think she's almost turned into a fish. Um, because when a human is in the fairy world, they begin to slowly turn into whatever that kingdom is. So, for example, because she's in the fauna court, she starts turning into an animal. If she was in the flora court, she'd start turning into a plant. If she was in the fungus court, she'd turn into a fungus, etc. Um, and that just happens when humans are there and they're not bound to a fairy because there's no magic protecting them. They just get affected by, like, the inherent magic in the world. And the same goes for fairies. If a fairy is stuck in the human world, if they stay past a sunset or a sunrise, uh, they turn into whatever thing they're based off. So if you're a fox person, if you stay in the human world too long, you turn into an actual fox. So anyways, Jane, she almost gets lured into a trap where she's almost turned into a fish or something. Um, and then, But she escapes, luckily. She runs off to go find Lady Summer, but she starts turning into a bird. And she actually turns into a red-winged blackbird, and she is then captured by... <laughs> Sorry, my dog's crying upstairs. So she is then captured by another fairy who was also talked about in a previous video, um, Lady Ficus. She's kidnapped by her uh, because she thinks she's just a bird. She doesn't know she's a human. Um, and in the fairy world, a lot of animals can talk, so she's like, oh, you're not a human, you're just a, a talking bird who thinks they're a human. How cute. Um, but she's like, no, no, I'm a human, you have to let me out, I have to go find my husband. And she's like, sure, sure. Um, so she gets taken to Lady Ficus's garden, uh, which is full, it's like gated in, uh, and like closed in so the birds can't fly out. I can't remember if it's like actually encased or if it's magic. But either way, the birds are trapped in there, um, there's tons of different vegetation and stuff because Lady Ficus is from the Flora Kingdom and she likes flowers and plants and stuff. And so poor Jane is stuck as a bird in this giant garden. Um, and when she is there, she meets Tang, who I'm actually drawing. Um, so Tang, he is not a fairy or a human who was turned into a bird. He is simply a great hornbill, which are amazing birds. Don't get me started. Um, he... Uh, is very long-lived. Um, he, he was born a great hornbill or whatever, and he just lived so long that he has gained the ability to speak um, through magic or just through the weird world of, of the fairy kingdom uh, or the fairy world. He, he has gained the ability to talk. He's very smart. He really admires humans and fairies um, because he, in gaining this, like, new intelligence, he doesn't really connect with birds very well anymore because um, they all just want to talk about making a nest and finding food. And he's like, I want to talk about intellectual things. I want to, I want to just have a conversation with someone because he's, he's like, he's done everything he's needed to do in his life. Like, he had um, a, a bird wife 
slash mate or whatever, um, and had lots of baby hornbills, um, but his, his wife and babies, I think, were, um, attacked and eaten, um, so he's, he, he's filled with heartache, and he's like, no, I'm moving on, I'm gonna go hang out with the humans and the fairies. So he's really excited when he meets Jane, because he's like, oh, you can talk, and you, you know, you're a human, you want to talk about human stuff. Um, so he is kind of there for her, so that she's not lonely in this big garden. You know, he explains a lot of the world to her, uh, the fairy world, and um, he's her, they become friends, they become fast friends. Um, but what happens is that the longer she stays in the, the fairy world, the more and more bird-like she becomes. So not only is she a bird, she starts acting like one of the other regular birds. So she starts really worrying about making her nest, and she starts um, following instincts more than, like, her own thoughts. And so Tang starts to get worried, and he's like, okay, I need to break you out of here. Like, we need to get you to a fairy. And of course, Jane has told him about uh, why she's there, like, to get her husband. And he's like, okay, let's go find this lady Summer and break out of here and get you back to normal so that my friend will talk to me again. So they hitch a ride, I think, with um, a goblin. Can't remember his name for the life of me. Um, but he's in love with Lady Ficus. He works for her. Um, and he... He thinks that the only way he can get Ficus to love him is if he goes and spites her sister, uh, because a previous lover of, um, Lady Summer... Sorry, Ficus and Summer are sisters. This was mentioned in a previous video, but I realize it should not be taken for granted. So, Ficus and Summer are sisters, and previously, a different goblin who was courting Summer went and cursed Ficus. So now Ficus is all rotting and gross because this goblin cursed her. So... Ficus is goblin. Oh, his name is Wasp. That's it. He's based off a wasp. So Wasp, he's like, I'm in love with Ficus. The only way to get her to love me is if I go curse Summer and get back at her for cursing Ficus. So he's on an adventure to go find Lady Summer and Jane and Tang um, hitch a ride with him and they escape the garden. But Tang has like this horrible time getting Jane to like remember why they're doing what they're doing because she keeps thinking like oh i'm free i'm gonna go hide from predators and go make a nest and go find another you know red-winged blackbird to like go have babies with and he's like no 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 you're a human let's go find your human husband come on so eventually they make it to lady summers and they explain what's going on i think wasp kind of gets chewed away um after he he curses lady summer so lady summer is like she she takes Jane and Tang, no, not Tang, she takes Jane on as a servant, um, because through, through Tang's help, she's able to show up and, um, kind of pretend she wants to work for Lady Summer to kind of get close to her, find out where her son is, so she can take the son to the Fauna King to, I don't know, hold him ransom or get him killed or something. Uh, cause that's the only way she's gonna get home. She finds out Russell is not with Lady Summer. He actually went home on his own and they kind of <laughs> going opposite directions and never bumped into each other. So she's like, shoot, what do I do? Uh, but Lady Summer takes her on as a servant and she kind of works there to undo Lady Summer and earn her way home. So Tang, he, when he finds out, when him and Jane find out that, um, Russell has gone elsewhere, Jane who, uh, upon becoming a servant, she turns into, like, a humanoid again. She's now, like, a bird lady instead of just a bird. Um, and she's stuck there working as a servant for Lady Summer. So she's like, Tang, you can fly. You're super fast. You're the best. Go fly to where Russell is and tell him where I am so that he can come rescue me or I'll come find a way home. Just let him know that, like, I haven't left him and I haven't abandoned the kids. And Tang's like, okay, I'll do that. So he goes flying to go tell Russell. He manages to catch up to Russell. He tells him what's going on. Um, and then he, uh, Russell, who <laughs> has found out on his journey that Jane has been cheating on him, <laughs> um... I guess he knew before he started on his, his fairy journey, but he's finally coming to terms with it that Jane has been cheating on him, um, and she has with someone at her work. But he tells Tang, like, go tell Jane that, like, I want her home, but we have to talk. And so Tang is like, okay. So he flies off to go back to Jane, and in the process, he gets shot with an arrow. 
and it's very sad. And he flies all the way to Lady Summer's mansion. He makes it, um, and he, because Lady Summer's mansion is in the Pestilence Court, he quickly, the wound becomes infected, and he's dying quickly, and he falls into, into Jane's arms, and as he's dying, he tells her about Russell's message, and Jane is, like, crying, because she didn't really realize it, but she kind of has a crush on Tang, even though he's a bird, but she was a bird, so it makes sense. <laughs> and so, um, now this is gonna be the worst, because this is where we left the RP. We haven't gone past this point, but Bones and I have talked about what the heck is gonna happen after this. So, what happens is that before Tang can die, I can't remember if it was either, like, Jane's love or Lady Summer's magic, but he is saved by being turned into a fairy. So he doesn't die. <laughs> Phew. Um, but he's turned into a fairy, uh, which is kind of something he's always kind of wanted, because, like, fairies are cool. And I think he also becomes a servant of Lady Summer. And so this is where I am drawing him right now, where he is a lovely fairy, great hornbill, good sir. <laughs> um, and him and Jane were eventually supposed to fall in love. And I ship them, and they're cute. <laughs> and Tang is great. He's like a sassy old man bird. So there you go. He is also very vain. This didn't come through, because, like, through the whole thing, he's always been, like, a really great guy. But he's very vain because he's he's a beautiful, um, if you've ever seen, like, a, a great hornbill, they've got this, like, amazing, like, orange, bright orange beak. And they're beautiful, and they've got, like, orange stripes on their wings. They're really pretty birds. They're really cool. They're really loud. But he, he is very vain, and he's always preening and talking about how beautiful he is, and he can have any, any, <laughs> any bird he wants, because they all come flocking to him. Um, and Jane just rolls her eyes at him, but she's kind of like, yeah, you're kind of cute. Because <laughs> when she was a bird, she was like, hey, you, flirt, flirt, bird flirting. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that is, that is Jane and Tang. And they're very cute, like I said, I ship it, good vibes. I mean, first, Jane has to actually break up with her husband and stop just cheating on him. Um, but eventually that will happen in this RP, should we ever finish it. <laughs> I think Bones has talked about wanting to, like, restart it. That's something we do with a lot of RPs, where we'll get to a certain point and be like, okay, like, some of these plot threads just aren't working and we need to, like, go back and figure things out. Because the first round is always very, like, improv, don't exactly know where things are going, so there's a lot of weird plot threads don't, that don't go anywhere. Um, so we might restart this and get a better foundation and introduce characters earlier. But there we go. There's Tang, there's Jane, and they're cute, and I like drawing birds. And thank you so much for watching. We are currently at Fernal Equinox in Toronto at table 69 in the dealer's room, so go say hi if you're there. Um, I'd be curious if anyone who is there watches our videos. But anyways, we will not be doing a stream tomorrow. Sorry about that. But we just can't because we'll be on the con floor the whole time. So, yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the vlog. Goodbye!